this is MJ and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to make a granny square cardigan. The cardigan is going to be crop length and button up. So the yarn that I'm using for this pattern is Mary Maxim Mellow Spun DK. It is a light weight number three yarn and it's 100% acrylic. I've chosen five colors the color that I have here is taupe and it's going to be my main color which will be the last round of all of my squares and we'll be joining them as we go. Mellow Spun has a really large selection of colors so you can get creative and pick out colors that you like but the other four colors that I chose is berry which is this color here, the cream, dark oak which is a nice um, dark brown color and also soft pink so now when you're crocheting up the squares we have all of the combinations you can make here and it's actually really easy once you get going at them but we have crocheted up six squares all with cream centers and these are the combinations that you can make starting with a cream center. And for each of our colors, we're going to do the same. So here is our berry centers, and then these are all the combinations you can make with a berry center. And I'll have all of this outlined in the pattern and on the blog. And then we do the same with the light pink center and the brown center. And then once you have your combinations, then you can multiply out doing as many as you need for the size you're working on. So depending on the size, so this is a total of six for each color. So we have six times four is 24. And then depending on how many squares you need, just multiply those out. And some of them are gonna be, um, sizes won't come out exact so you may need to make a few less or a few more of each color combination but it's just a good starting point to look at all of the combinations you can make and then go from there. So I'll be using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook for crocheting our granny squares and then I will use a four millimeter crochet hook for the ribbing. So these are dots crochet hooks from we crochet and I'll have a link on where you can buy the set in the description box below and I'll also have the link to the yarn as well. So let's get started with our granny square. So I'm going to make a magic ring. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my index finger three times. I'm going to take my 4.5 millimeter hook sliding it through all three loops on my finger. I'm going to take the first loop pulling it through I'm going to chain three for my first double crochet. Then I'm going to work two double crochets in the ring. And chain one. So this is my first cluster. Now I'm going to do three double crochets, chain one, three more times. Double crochet. So there's three double crochet, chain one. We'll do that two more times. Chain one. So now I'm going to pull my ring tight. So take your tail, begin to pull it. You're gonna see one loop's pulled in and this other loop's popped out still. So just take the loop that's pulling in, give it a tug. It's gonna pull that other loop tight. Then you can just take your tail. Now we're going to slip stitch in that first double crochet slip stitch in the next double crochet and into the chain one space and then I'm going to fasten this color off. Okay 
so there's our first center done now what we like to do is I mean you can do this however you want but just what um, my daughter and I like to do is go and make all of our centers in our first color get them finished and then add our next color and move on that way but you can really do each square individually and move forward whatever you really prefer so now let's bring in our next color I'm going to put a slip knot on my hook I'm going to join into the chain one space I'm going to chain three Just going to take these tails i'm going to crochet over both of them one time so i'm going to work my double crochet now i'm going to drop one of the tails off i'm going to do my next double crochet over one of the tails i'm going to chain one and i'm going to do three more double crochets all in that same space okay so this is going to make a corner A chain one and in my next chain one space I'm going to work three double crochets chain one three double crochets so one two three chain one one two three chain one and we're going to do that around so each chain one space is going to get a corner so that we can make our square so three double crochets chain one three double crochets chain one three doubles chain one and three doubles chain one and then I'm going to slip stitch across to the chain one space and fasten off this color so this is just how I like to do it. So I'm going to do a slip knot, put it on my hook. We're going to join into the chain one space. I'm going to chain three. I'm going to take my tails, crochet over both of them, that first double crochet. I'm gonna do another double crochet. I'm gonna drop off one of the tails, crochet only over one of them. And I'm gonna show you when I'm done here um, why I'm doing that. Chain one. I'm not going to crochet over any tails now. I'm going to do my three doubles. Chain one. Okay, so that's one corner. Now in between the corners, we're just going to do uh, our cluster, which is our three double crochets, chain one. And then in the chain one corner, three doubles, chain one and three doubles, chain one. three doubles chain one between our corners so I'm just going to continue this around now make my corner just one cluster in between another corner 
want to cluster in between. Okay, so once you get all the way around, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to slip stitch across, first double, second double, the chain one, and those slip stitches count for our three stitches. And then we can fasten this off. And your square should measure three inches. So a three inch square, because when we add our final round, it's going to be four inches. Now, if your square is not three inches, you will want to maybe increase your hook size if you need to make your square a little bit bigger. If your square is too big, you want to go down a hook size. So make sure you're on track with this square. You can always slightly stretch it out a little bit as you measure because we will block it once it's all complete, once we have all of our squares together. I'm not going to block it beforehand. So it will have a, a slight bit of stretch, but not a whole lot. So you just want to make sure it's going to be close to that three inch mark. It's really important to note that even small discrepancies with your granny square size can drastically change the size of your cardigan because it's not like you're just looking at a half an inch on one square. It could be a half an inch over several squares, which are going to go around your whole body. So it can really throw off your sizing if you don't get this part right. And because it's just a small square, you can whip this up change your yarn, change your hook, make sure you are using the right weight, the right hook size to end up with a four inch square when you're all done. So now let's take a look at these tails back here. So you're going to have this tail to weave, but if you want a little shortcut, this is of course optional, but we have a little stitch between these tails that you can see. And if you want to simply knot these together and trim, okay, a nice tight knot. Okay, you can save on a lot of weaving tails, but it, it's not, you know, too much at the same time to weave these tails if you don't want to have any knots or worrying about a knot coming undone. Like I've tripled it to make sure that it's really nice and secure. This is just a little tip. If you really hate weaving in tails, you have a lot of squares to make and you'd rather just eliminate a few quickly, then go ahead and just do this. Now you'll still have this tail as well as this tail, but this one we've already crocheted over it. So it's really simple to just take it back quickly in the opposite direction. This yarn needle is kind of small, but there I made it work. So this one, you know, just some extra security there. You can just give it a weave back. It only takes a second and then you have that done like this and you just have this tail to weave. So that is my little tip for dealing with the tails, but you can weave them in. You can really do your preferred method for making your granny square. But Okay, so I'm going to lay my squares out before I start joining them together. So my first back section is going to be, I'm working on the medium large size. So working across the back, we're going to have six squares. So I'm going to take random squares here to mix them up. one two three four five six and I'm going to place out another row as well okay so we're gonna start by joining 
these together. So this is going to be the back, the first back section. And I have the charts shown in the pattern and on the blog on how you're going to put your size together. So I'm going to start over here in our first corner and we can start out by working three sides of the square. So I'm going to join into my corner. the slip stitch. I'm going to chain three. And work two doubles. So this corner is only going to have one cluster, we're not making it a full corner. I'm going to chain one, work up the side. Our, our three doubles, chain one. I'm going to get to the corner, three doubles, chain one, and we're going to complete this corner. Okay, so we're going to come across, we're going to come down, we're going to end like this. So we're only going to have our three doubles in this corner. We're not doing a complete corner. So I'm going to work, I'll just work through it with you. And we're coming to the end and we're just doing our three doubles. Okay, so I've worked our cluster. I've chained one and now we'll be working over into this corner. I'm gonna yarn over and I'm going to work three doubles Okay, so you can see here how these are going to look. So what we wanna do is how we're gonna join this is we're going to slip stitch into this chain one space. Then we're going to do our three doubles right into the next chain one space. One, two, three. Then the next chain one space on our completed side, again, going to slip stitch, yarn over and work our three doubles. Slip stitch. Okay, so once you've gotten up to this corner, we're not going to slip stitch. We're going to chain one and complete our corner. Okay, so don't worry about this. We will join these later on. So just leave it like that for now. And I'm going to continue working across. This also saves a lot of tails to weave as well. OK, 
Okay, so at the corner, we're just gonna make it as normal. Chain one. So we're basically crocheting again another three sides on this square. And we're just not finishing off that final corner. Okay, so let's, this one goes here. So now we're gonna be bringing in this square. So we chain one as we would for our corner. And I'm going to go right into doing three double crochets in this corner. And then we slip stitch to join in the chain one. Then we go right into the next chain one, working our three doubles. So we're slip stitching as we work along to join. I keep getting a little bit of a tangle here on the yarn I pulled out. So I'm gonna get this untangled and keep working through it with you. Okay, so we're getting up to the corner and we're not going to join. We're gonna complete the corner as normal, chain one and three doubles. And we're going to keep joining squares just like this. And now for the size I'm working on, I have six across. So I'm gonna keep going. So you go across, come down, join, do the three sides of each one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get these worked up so that I have all six joined and then I'll meet you up again. Okay, so I'm working on my sixth square and I'm not coming down. I'm gonna keep this edge unfinished. So I'm finishing up here with my three double crochet I'm going to chain one and now we need to start bringing in the next row and what we're going to do with this row is we're going to be crocheting the this side of them only working across and joining them so i have chain one we're going to work start working our double crochet three double crochets I'm going to push this stuff back out of the way so now how this goes is it's gonna go like this so I'm just gonna turn my work and shift it so that we're looking at it this way now And as we were doing before, we're gonna slip stitch, then our three, then our three doubles, slip stitch to join, three doubles. doubles okay so once you've worked your three doubles we're going to chain one we're going to leave this corner we're going over to this corner we're going to slip stitch 
to join and chain one. Okay, and now we bring in the next square. We start working our double crochets right in the corner. So three doubles. And then we slip stitch in the chain one. Now we're going to continue working across the side as normal. So for this row, you need to think we're just crocheting across these edges and joining to this edge. Okay, so work our three doubles, slip stitch. I'm to my next corner. I'm going to work three doubles. Then I'm gonna chain one. I'm coming over. I'm skipping this corner. I'm going over to this corner, working a slip stitch, chain one. And then we bring in the next square working the double three doubles and you're going to continue adding your squares as many squares as you have for this one we have six for this size i'm going to work through one more corner with you slip stitch You can see it works really quickly. We're not going to have a bunch of ends to have to fasten off and weave. Okay, so I'm to the corner. So you work your three doubles and then you wanna to remember to chain one, slip stitch in your corner over here, chain one again, and then bring in another square and continue across. Okay, so I'm coming to the end. I've worked my three doubles. I'm going to chain one, and we're going to slip stitch to this corner since this is our edge. And chain one. So now what we wanna do is come back around. So this is more like the first row where we're doing three sides. So we're basically, going to be filling all of this in now. So we're going to work three doubles to finish this corner. Chain one. And we're gonna work around this as normal. So I'm gonna come all the way around and I'll meet you up down here. Okay, so I'm just finishing my three double crochets down this corner. I'm going to chain one. And now we need to join over to this corner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go under this chain over to this chain one corner and then I'm going to slip stitch through and you want to make sure you go under both every time so if you just go under this chain one under this chain one and slip stitch chain one then we're going to go right into our three doubles slip stitch and work up the side here as normal Okay, so now I'm to the corner. We're going to work again as normal. So we're gonna do three doubles, 
chain one, turn, three doubles. And now we're going to work across all of this the same way. So we're going to work all the way down. We're going to go under this chain, under this chain, slip stitch, and then keep working around until we have these all filled in. And we're finishing up here at this corner with three double crochet. Okay, so I wanted to show you this one more time. I've worked across. I've worked my last three doubles. I'm going to chain one. And here you can see there's the chain and here's the corner. I'm going to go underneath. Okay, and then I'm going to slip stitch this all together and chain one. And then I'm coming right into this corner and working my three doubles. Okay, and then I'm coming over here, slip stitching. Slip stitching to the side here. So now the next row is going to have, it's actually going to end up with 12 because we're going to be working into our sleeve. But we're going to start out just adding, I'm going to pick my colors again, going across here to line up my next row. So this is now going to be worked. We're gonna continue working up and going across and I'm going to go across, I'll start maybe this one square with you just to make sure that you remember how to do this. So I'm just gonna shift everything again this way. I'm gonna chain one. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do my three doubles. Slip stitch. We're just piecing it together. So we'll go over the corner again. So we do three doubles when we hit our corner. Make sure you chain one at the corners and we're slip stitching across. chain one and then you bring in the next so we're just working across that bottom row on this on this one okay so i'm going to continue working across and i'll meet you up at the end Okay, so as we get to the end here, I've worked the three doubles, chain one, we're going to slip stitch into this corner. I'm going to chain one, but now we want to continue with our sleeve length, okay? So our sleeve is only three squares. If you wanted a longer sleeve, you could add four, but for this pattern, this is what we're doing. So now we're going to come and do go right into three double crochets in this corner. Chain one, 
three doubles, chain one, three doubles. Just working my doubles really quick because I want to get across to show you. Three doubles. chain one and then we're just going to go right into the next corner of the next square okay so we're still just working basically that bottom row as we work along and you can continue adding as many squares here outwards for the sleeve. I get to this corner. I'm gonna chain one, bringing in my last square. chain one and then as we go we need to come up around this one and then we're going to do basically this up and down all the way across so at the corner three doubles chain one three doubles chain one and then work this corner so what you're going to notice is that one side of the cardigan is going to have a finished edge and then the other side is going to have the raw edge and that's how it should look okay so one side is going to be finished off the other side isn't but I'm gonna work through all of it with you so don't fear I'm gonna work through each of the steps so you can see how it all comes together so I am going to continue now working around and I'll meet you up down here okay so I've worked all the way down so now what I'm going to do is chain one and I'm going to go under. We just have the one to go under, but I'm going to go under it and slip stitch and chain one. Okay, we're not joining it to anything else, but I still want the slip stitch there. And then I'm going to continue. working my three doubles and slip stitching and just work this as normal. So once you get down to the corner, we're gonna chain one and we're just gonna go under, I'm going to slip stitch, chain one, Okay, and then you're back to basically how we did row two. We're going to work all the way across. Once you've worked all the way across, I'm going to meet you back up again to show you how to add on for the sleeve on the other side. Okay, so I'm coming to the end. Now, normally we would stop here, but because we want to continue 
to add more squares on for the sleeve, we're gonna work all the way down. So let's do that. Turn the corner, I, I had already chained one. Chain one. Chain one, I'm going to slip stitch, go under and slip stitch. Chain one, and we're going to work three doubles in this corner and then we're going to slip stitch it along so now we're back to again what you're familiar with it really does like as you get doing it it will just naturally flow together Chain one, turn the corner, and now we'll work this side and down to this corner. Now, I also want to mention, if you wanted to make this longer, you just want to add more rows of your six. So if we look at the back, just add as many. Before you start into the sleeves, just add as many rows as you want to make the cardigan the length that you want. You could easy make it as long as you want. You just need to account for more yarn as you make it bigger. So I'm going to quickly work that down to the other corner and then I'll okay, make Okay, so I've worked down to this corner my three doubles. I'm going to chain one it's basically is more like our very first row we did and we're just going to start right into three doubles slip stitch And then this square, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to work three sides and then bring in the last square of the sleeve. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and work this down. I'm going to join the next. And this time, though, on the last square, we want to leave that edge. We want to end up in the corner. So now for the next row, I already organized how I wanted my squares to go. So like this one I'll bring in, then I'll bring in this one. And now we're working across 12. Everything is established now with the sleeve. So this is just going to be repetitive of what I've already shown you. But let me just jump in and do one with you. So I just worked to the corner, the three doubles. I'm going to chain one and work my three doubles in this corner. Now this row I like, it's always really quick because we're just going across the one side.
Okay, chain one, because we're at a corner. We don't slip stitch to this one. We're going to go over to the next one. And chain one. Bring in our next square. We're at the corner, so we'll chain one, come over to this corner, work a slip stitch, chain one, and continue all the way across. Okay, so once you've worked all the way, we're going to chain one, slip stitch into the corner, chain one and continue working up the side and then this is going to be done just the same let's take a look at it so you're going to be going and doing the three sides now so all the way down make sure you come through here you're slip stitching through those chains and all the way around. So now the only difference that I want you to do is you need to find here at the neck, so the center two squares, these ones here, you can join them when you go around because this is going to be open. So we're not gonna have any more squares coming along here. So it's a good idea. We will have a square coming down to this corner that you'll be able to anchor this one, but the center two squares, so that's going to be, let's count over one, two, three, four, five. So square six and square seven, you just want to make sure you slip st stitch them together. So it's basically the same, but when you come up here, instead of leaving them, just slip stitch. So get up to this corner, work your three doubles, chain one, slip stitch, chain one, and then work um, across. So really, almost the same as what you've been doing like here's one down here but we didn't slip stitch so we just want to slip stitch those together ultimately if you forget and you don't do it it can always get sewn together at the end not a big deal but okay so i wanted to show you how the next section is going to go so this is our left front so this is the other section of our sleeve and then our front panel. So as we keep joining, this is what we're going to be working on next. So I wanted to show you this. I've already laid out how I want my squares to go. And let's bring the piece we've been working on. So I finished working across and this is where we're at here. So we want to now come up and bring in this section. So we'll bring in this section, then we need to come back. So we go across the bottom, again, just sort of how we've been doing, but I really wanna detail this for you, how this works. So we're gonna join here Okay, then we're going to come up and we're going to do the three sides like this. Okay, then we're going to bring in this section, do the same thing. We're going to join everything here. Pull this down so you can see. So we'll join everything here. We're going to come back, going back like this. Okay, and then we're going to have these pieces we need to bring in. Okay, so just this small section, 
that we need to do. So when we come across here, of course, I'm going to go over all this with you. We'll be wanting to join them because we won't be joining these corners because then we'll need to be coming over here and going, joining across here, then doing our sides and then here. So, and then we have to go do the other side of the cardigan to finish it. So it seems tricky, but it really isn't. As you get working it, it's amazing how fast it comes together. And I think you're going to really like this method. And it saves you not only the time of having to cut and weave all those tails, it then saves you the time of having to seam it all together and deal with those tails and whatnot. So it really is... A fun method. Of course, it's much easier when you're working on just a blanket that's a rectangle, but I have found this much easier than I thought to add the different panels and the different things that we're doing. So I hope that you have fun with it as well and that you're enjoying doing this join as you go style for the cardigan. Okay, so I'm going to finish off my three doubles. I'm going to chain one and go right into doing and then this is all very repetitive we're just turning now we're going to bring in and slip stitch okay so I'm coming to the end now I had joined my squares here and I should have also joined them here thinking of how this is going to go but it's all right we can join them all together here so what we're going to do is chain one and I'm going to go through this corner and I'm going to go through this corner slip stitching them all together and chain one so see it doesn't really matter like whether you do it there or not you can easily slip stitch everything to make it work no problem at all so chain one and now we're gonna do our pass coming back like I say is a little bit more time consuming because we're doing the three sides at this point so I don't think I need to go over this with you again because it's we've already covered it so what we're going to do is do our three sides coming all the way and then we're going to bring in the next row we're going to do all of that one as well I'm going to meet you back up um when I'm working back just to show you again how to join the sections of the sleeve where um, we aren't going to be joining any more squares on but other than that this is all repetitive so keep joining up the rest of your sleeve section and I'll continue working it up off camera Okay, so I'm coming to the end now of the last row of the sleeves. So I've been joining all my squares along and I just wanted to cover this again. I've chained one. We are slip stitching here to join. Chain one and I'm now going to continue. working my three sides and joining them okay so I also it's okay if we don't join these two up at the top but we'll probably join the rest of them just so it doesn't get confusing so I'll cover that once I get to these squares over here 
Okay, so I'm over to my third square that I'm working on. So these ones I left because the front panels will be worked to join those ones. But for these ones that are finishing off the sleeve, what you can do is your first cluster, chain one, just slip stitch, chain one, and continue working. Just making sure that this edge is finished off. So now you'll just do that for the remaining squares. Just make sure you join them when you come up to the corners. So I am going to finish that. And then I'm gonna meet you up when I finish this section off here. Okay, so I've worked across the sleeve. We've done our little joins because this is a finished edge. And now what we're going to do, because these are gonna get joined after we're going to just set those aside what we're going to do is finish now these raw edges because we need to finish them off we won't be adding on any more to the top so we can just work around we're going to come all the way down here and also all the way down to finishing the back over to where we started So I had finished with my three doubles. So we're gonna chain one and complete this now like we normally would. Chain one, three doubles, chain one, three doubles, chain one and now this is our corner so we need to do our other side of our corner so three doubles chain one and now we're just going to slip stitch into this chain one corner so slip stitch chain one and then we need to finish the other three doubles in this corner Okay, so basically you're just doing your three doubles, chain one, and then just at your corner um, where these join, you're slip stitching. Okay, so I'm gonna work that across. Okay, so the corner I made just as normal. Now I'm coming to this section and I am going to just slip stitch it. I chained one, I'm gonna slip stitch it down into this corner chain one and then here is the next corner so really straightforward and once you get down here do your corner as normal and then i'm going to meet you up at the end Okay, so I'm almost to the end here. We've got our last corner. We need to finish off with three doubles, chain one, and then we're going to slip stitch to join. You can always slip stitch over if you wanna fasten off here in the chain one space. Okay, so the back is finished. All this part is finished now. So let's come back up to our front panel. Our front left. So now we still have these guys to add on. So what I'm going to do is join into this corner. We're going to act as though we've just come along this side. Put a slip knot on my hook. I'm gonna join to the chain one corner. I'm gonna chain one. And 
and I'll start double crocheting in the corner of this square. And I always just like to turn my work so that I'm working This will be pretty quick because it's just a small panel. I'm just doing this as normal. Chain one, the diagonal corner we're going to join. Chain one, work the next square. Okay, and we need to join this corner because this is a finished edge. Chain one, slip stitch into this corner, chain one, and continue. Okay, so this is going to be worked just like we've been doing. So we need to work our sides. When we work this side, we're joining, and we're going to stop here and do our next squares, okay? And then when we get to here, we need to come down and just finish this raw edge only. You can see that here. Okay, so we're gonna go here like this. We're gonna join these squares here, come up, go around, joining them. And then I'm going to meet you up here and we'll finish off together this raw edge. Okay, so I'm finishing up this front panel and I'm just about finished my first ball of the taupe. So we can chain one for the corner. And just like we finished the other edge, we're gonna work across the granny square as normal. And then when we get to this corner, I'm gonna need to get another ball of yarn. Finishing off our corner, our three doubles. Chain one slip stitch, chain one, okay we need to finish off this corner for three doubles chain one and then we're going to slip stitch down into this chain one corner and we're going to fasten off we have our starting tail too here so i'm going to knot this we can weave those tails in later okay and so now this side is finished to this stage. So let's come back over now to our right side and see where we're at. So we need to basically do the same thing. We need two more rows of our sleeve and then we have 
just the four squares for the front panel. So I'm gonna go grab the rest of my squares and line them up to show you. Okay, so this is how I've positioned out my sleeve and then my next front panel. So just mix and match your squares. You like how the colors are lined up again. And then I'm just going to move these out of the way again. And I'm going to focus on this next row. So once you get going at this, it's all going to make sense again. So you think we want to join them across the bottom first. So we're going to come over and we're going to join up this corner. So I'm going to put a slip knot on my hook and I want to join these corners. So I'm just going to join them together with my slip stitch and then chain one. Then this is going to be my first square. So I'm just gonna get right into it with my doubles. Okay, that's a little loose. don't want any gapping there. Okay, and I do like to turn my work, so I'm just going to stack these ones up, get them out of the way, and get my work turned so that I can work along this row. So this next section is going to be repetitive again to what I've already been showing you. So I don't think it's anything new that you're going to be confused on. We want to get the two rows of the sleeves done. Just remember whenever you are gonna have an outer edge to make sure you get any of the corners slip stitched together. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these two rows of the sleeve done and then I'm gonna meet you up again. Okay, so I have finished now these two rows of the sleeve. Made sure to join all of this section and I just left these guys loose. And now we're gonna be bringing in the front panel, okay? Which is gonna be a little easier than the other side because we're just joining them as normal from this side, we don't have to reattach. We can just continue. Okay. And we're just going to join these as normal, work those two rows of the front panel, and I'll meet you up once I have them done. Okay, so I finished my front panel, and now I just need to go down the final raw edge and slip stitch down here. So this again is repetitive to what I've already shown you. So I'm going to go ahead and work down this final side. And we'll have all of our squares joined together. Okay, so I just slip stitched down in this corner. You can now fasten off. And I have all of my squares joined. So now you can see the front panels. And 
and we can fold it. Now, what we're going to do though before we do anything else is we need to block it because we didn't block our squares ahead of time. You want to block it out. Make sure that it's all up to measurements. Then once it's blocked, we can seam it and do all of the edging. So the band is actually going to make it a little longer. You may look at it thinking this is pretty short, but once we add the band, it's going to make it a little bit longer. We're going to have the nice collar. So that's going to fill in the gaps here more and also adding the cuff. Now, if you wanted it three quarter length sleeve, this would look great, but we're going to add the nice cuff on it to pull it in at the bottom. So I'm going to finish getting all of my tails woven in and then block it out to measurements. So you can submerge the entire cardigan into some lukewarm water with some wool wash. Allow that to soak for around 25 minutes. Squeeze out as much water as possible. I like to gently just roll it in a towel to get the excess water out and then lay it out to measurements on the blocking mats and give it a pin and then let it fully dry. You can also use a spray bottle and spray it that way if you don't want to fully dampen the whole piece. You can spray it and pin it to measurements that way as well and just wait for it to dry completely before removing your pins. So I'm going to get that step done and then we're going to meet back up again. Okay, so once you have blocked your cardigan, what we're going to do is seam together the side and the sleeves. So I've put my right sides facing and I'm just measuring off about three times the length that we need. Just so I'm sure that I have a lot of yarn for joining, I'm going to use my yarn needle and you can start at the bottom, the sleeve, really either is fine. So I'm going to join in my corners. So we can join that with a knot and then I'm just going to whip stitch it. So I'm going through each stitch. You're going th under the stitch on this side, going under the stitch on this side. And we're going to work that all the way. Okay, so once you get down to the end, I've just knotted it off and then I'm going to weave in my tail. So I'm just going to go back up through the stitches here, just hiding the tail. And then you can weave back in the opposite direction and do the same with your starting tail. And you're going to do the ex exact same thing for your other side. So that you have both sides seamed and then your cardigan is assembled. And then we'll start on to all the edging. So we're going to do the bottom band, the collar, we're going to add some buttonholes. Of course, that's optional if you wanna leave off the buttons. And we're also going to add a cuff as well. Okay, so now we're gonna put it back so that our right side is back out again. You wanna get it properly assembled. 
Okay. So now what we're going to do is be working across this long edge. So we have all of the granny squares for our front and our back. And I'm gonna join, um, join back with my larger hook. Now, if you're working on some of the sizes that use the four millimeter, then join whatever hook you've been using to make your granny squares. So I'm gonna put a slip knot. I'm going to join in to the corner the single crochet now I'm going to work single crochets through the back loop only now if you want to pull this in at your waist a little bit you can skip your chain spaces if you want to keep it so that it doesn't pull in that the ribbing is going to be about the same as the rest of the cardigan then I would work through your chain spaces as well but I think I'm going to pull this one in a little bit the the other one that we have done in the white it is a wider band but this one I'm going to have it snug in a little bit so I'm going to skip the chain one spaces and I'm going to continue working across in the back loop of these double crochets. Now, what I am going to do is put a single crochet in the corner right here, and then I'm going to continue one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then we'll have 13 when we do this one most of the corners this one is where we've joined the seam so we can't go into it but when we have another corner it's really easy so this one you're just going to have to make a space for that stitch and I'm going to continue that all the way okay so when you get over to the corner you're just going to add a single crochet chain one and turn and I'm going to change over to my smaller hook at this point. If you're already using the smaller hook, then don't worry. And I'm going to single crochet in every stitch across. So this is now working across on the wrong side, and this is going to be our base row. So now before starting on the band of the bottom band of the cardigan, I suggest trying it on, seeing how much more length you would like. This is where you can modify the pattern to suit the style that you're going for. So if you are liking the length and just need a little bit, you can chain out less for your band so that your band's a little bit uh, thinner. Now, if you want more length, you're feeling it's a bit short, you'd like a lot more length, you could do a wider band. So you can easily customize that by trying it on, trying the fit. Now, of course, at you can also add an additional square to the bottom, like I mentioned in the pattern. So you could alter the length that way, but if once you've already made it and you try it on, you can kind of get an idea just putting it against your body to see, okay, I'd like, you know, two more inches of length or three more inches of length or even four more inches of length, and you can easily add that when you're attaching the band. Okay, so I've worked all the way back along my row. Now I'm going to chain out for the band. And this is where you have a little bit of flexibility to alter the number of chains for the width of the band you would like. So I'm going to go with 15. And 
And this is going to give me about three inches. And then we'll single crochet in the back down along the chain. So it will end up being 14 stitches. Okay, so once you've worked all the way down, we're now going to skip over the first stitch. We're going to slip stitch into the next two. And then what we're going to do is skip the slip stitches and work single crochets through the back loop only. So you'll work through each stitch it's always a good idea to keep track of your stitch count. These bands are really easy to lose a stitch. chain one and turn and then we'll be working single crochets through the back loop only back down the row so we're making a single crochet in the back loop only ribbed band and what we're just doing as we work is we're slip stitching it to that base row that we made so you're going to have the same number of stitches or the same number of rows as you have stitches along the base. So if you chose to work into the chain spaces, you'll have more rows as if you only worked into the actual double crochet stitches. So now once you get here, you can see we this is where we slip stitched. We want to slip stitch now into the next two. And this is what you're going to repeat along as you work. So you're just going back and forth in rows. You want each row to have 14 stitches and then you slip stitch in the next two stitches along the base. So you're going to continue working this all the way across the cardigan, finishing that base row. And now we'll be working our collar the same way, but we'll be adding buttonholes and also the cuff, um, the ribbing for the cuffs as well. So I'm going to continue working my band all the way across off camera and then I'll meet you back up when I've got that complete. So now you can see with the band being finished, you can see how it's pulling it in nicely on this one that I've made. Now I'll show you also the band on the white card. So on the white cardigan, we made this band a little bit more narrow, so it's not quite as wide as the other one. So this is a little bit shorter. Now my daughter made this one for herself and she's a bit shorter than me. So it suit her fine to do a little bit shorter band. And this is where you can customize it for yourself. And she also didn't pull it in. So you can see that the band is more in line with the width of the granny squares. So working through those chain one spaces, you are go going to end up with a wider band. So if you prefer that look, go with that style. Or if you'd rather that it pulls in a bit at the waist, like I've shown on this one, then go ahead and follow the instructions I did by skipping those chain one spaces. So now once you've worked all the way around, we're going to start working now on the collar section. And I'm going to switch back to my larger hook for this part. So I'm gonna continue right from the band. So I'm not gonna fasten off at all. 
I'm just going to chain one and turn, and we can just start working right away. So I'm gonna work through the back loop only, and I'm gonna work across the band. And I'll add a single crochet for this single crochet row and another single crochet for this row. Then we're going to get into our granny square. So I'm going to work through the back loop one, two, three, and you can work through the back loop of the chain or just work um, right into it if you're struggling, if your chains are too tight. But basically we want one stitch per stitch across. Because unlike this band that I did, I don't want my collar snugging in. We want a nice even line with no bunching or pulling. Okay, so I'm getting across my granny square. I can do a back loop here for that chain one and a back loop here for this chain one and then continue okay so just continue like this you're going to go all the way around we're going to end up back on the other side okay so once you've worked all the way i'm going to change to my smaller hook just like we did with the band i'm going to chain one turn and we're going to work back in single crochets so we're just going through each stitch now so we're on the wrong side and we're going to go back working through every stitch okay so we're going to end up back on our other side back over here and then we'll start working the band Okay, so now once you are back over to this side, I'm gonna grab some stitch markers for our buttonholes. Buttonholes are so much easier than you think, so don't be intimidated by them. So I'm planning on three buttons. If you've made your cardigan longer, you may wanna add more. And these buttons are a good size. Let me measure them just so we're they look like they're 40 millimeters so these ones are a good size button now you could go with really any size button you want you just need to adjust your buttonhole for them so i'm going to start with a button that will be down here and i just kind of like to evenly space them out something like this. So now when we're making a buttonhole, we want it sort of to be in line with the center of the button. So I'm thinking probably around this row, we'll wanna make a buttonhole. And then I like to make sure that I have them the same distance. So this one, let's say, here and then I can count how many stitches are in between so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So 18 stitches in between and let's take a look at how many stitches from the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 18 and then I can count 18 so I know this button will be spaced the same distance. One, two. Okay, so I counted 18, so in the 19th stitch we'll add 
this marker. So then at the markers, we will make buttonholes. And I think that's good. Let me just take a look at my other card again. So we're going to start by crocheting out the collar just like I've shown you with the band and the cuff for chaining. So now the size that I'm working on is a two size. It's a medium and it's also a large. So this is where you can also have a little bit of flexibility with how the size comes out. This particular size has two squares for the neck opening. So it's a fair size. It's actually eight inches because we have two four inch squares on this one. So it's quite a bit bigger than some of the sizes. So some of our sizes are only going to have one square. So we don't have as much of a gap to fill in with those sizes. So you could go with a smaller band or if you're looking for more ease in that pattern, you can make your band still large and it gives you some more ease in the front because usually um, the front, you may want a little bit more space to go over the bust. But for this one, it's a slash medium and large size. So for if you're making a medium, you may want to do a bit smaller band here or collar than if you're working on a large. You may want a little bit more room around the bust if you're working on the large size. But look at the schematics. Take a look at the measurements. I give you the measurements of what this is without the collar. So you're getting four inches for every square. So we have six across the back for this one, which is 24, and then two in the front, which is eight and eight. So if you wanted a lot more um, coverage, you can make a wider collar. Now for myself, I typically run more between a small to medium size. So I wouldn't mind if this is pulling in a little bit more. Okay, so it doesn't really you may think that this is going to distort the cardigan with the back being bigger than the front, but it really doesn't. It comes in nicely. So if we take a look at my other one, we did a thinner um, collar on this one, and it does actually pull it in nicely. It's almost making that back square sort of go to the underarm and work as the side square. So this one pulls in nicely and fits nice. So I don't wanna to go too wide on the collar on mine because I don't want it too oversized. But either way, I would say if you're going with the large, you're wanting it to fit a large size, maybe go with the same width as we did down here with the band. So we did 14 stitches. So maybe stick with 14 stitches when you're doing this. And that gives you three additional inches on each side. If you're wearing it open, if you're closing it, it's giving you three inches, okay? Because they're overlapping. So I'm gonna go with 10 um, as my width and that's gonna make it a half inch less than this one. So instead of three inches, we're going to end up with two and a half. So I'm going to start with a chain of 11. And then I'll single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Each chain across. So we're going to have 10. You could go less, you can go more. And also, if you prefer just to work back and forth in rows for your collar, that would be fine as well. You could just keep going and not have a ribbed collar. And you don't even need to add the buttons if you don't want. Not everyone wants a button up. So I'm showing you the buttons just so you can learn how to do them, but you don't have to add these buttons. So now what I'm going to do is skip that first stitch 
and slip stitch into the next two. Then I'm skipping the slip stitches and then now I'm starting to work in that back loop only of each stitch. Two, three, four, chain one and turn. So there's 10 and I'm gonna come back down The important thing here is for me to get to this buttonhole so I can show you how it's going to work. So I need to slip stitch into the next two. So now I'll be working two rows now for these two slip stitches. And as you can see, the second slip stitch is our marker, which means the row when we're coming back down is where we'll make the buttonhole. If your marker is at the first slip stitch, you would make your buttonhole coming back up this row. But the buttonholes are worked the same whether you're working up the row or down the row, you're just wanting to chain and skip stitches. So I'm going to work back. up the row ten stitches chain one and then I need to make the buttonhole on this row now this is a fair size button so I think I'm going to need I think four stitches would be too much. I'm worried that two may be too few. So now your button could also be moved throughout this row however you want it as well. But what you can always do is make the buttonhole and then see if your button will fit through it. What I don't like is if the button holes are too loose because then they may not keep the button fastened. So let's just try two stitches and see. So one, two, three, four, one, two. So then I chain two, skip two stitches. So then I would be working through another four. I really don't feel like that hole is going to be big enough for this button. No, it's definitely not going to be big enough. Let's try, um, let's try four. So four would be, we're going to crochet three. One, two, three, four. We're going to skip four. One, two, three, four and then in the back loops. I think actually to make this buttonhole more, more secure, what we're gonna do is we're going to do two. I'm going to single crochet through both loops. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Single crochet through both loops. That's going to make that a little bit more secure and probably won't pull the button as much. And then work two in the back loop. So now let's see. Okay, so this is going to work good over, I think, this button. So I'm going to go with that nice big buttonhole since we're using such large buttons. But as you can see, you can play around. Um, play with your button and just make this opening as big or as small as you need it to be for your button. I like to try to put it in the center, but if it's off by one stitch one way or the other, like you may want, if you want a little more ease, you could put it to more the outside. Also, another option would be is to do toggles and then it wouldn't overlap if you need even more ease for the front. You could do toggle buttons and then your bands wouldn't even come overlapping. So then once you get down, you're going to slip stitch into the next two rows 
And then when we work back, one, two, three, then we're going to work four single crochet in the chain. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, chain one and turn. Work back down. slip stitch in the next two and at this point now that you've done that you may want to double check your button again this one is a little bit loose but I think it's going to work out okay if you feel like it is too loose go back and just do three stitches instead of what you're going to do is just keep working when you come to the markers make your buttonhole row whether it's going up or down it doesn't matter just add those chains and skipping stitches to make the buttonhole as you go and then just continue working your ribbing all the way around to the other side and then basically what you'll do is the same thing you'll count up four rows and the next row is where you want to sew the button because you want the button to be sewn directly across you can either just line it up but if you want to mark out the rows where you know your button needs to be in the center you'll know that you're sewing them on in the right places so I'm going to continue working this now off camera and then I'm going to meet you back up when I have the ribbing all complete so now what I suggest is trying on the cardigan to see how you like the length of the sleeve. So because some of our sizes have a three and a half inch square and some of them have a four inch, it will slightly affect the length of your sleeve. So if you're working on one of the sizes that have a three and a half inch square your sleeve will be a little bit shorter so you can make that up with the cuff making it a bit longer to make up the length but I suggest trying it on see where the sleeve comes and maybe you're going to like that it's a three-quarter length sleeve and you want to leave it but if you want to add the extra length on the cuff go ahead and do that so just sort of take a measure on yourself just to see how much more another option would be and I have this note in the pattern. If you would like a longer sleeve, you could always add an extra row of squares to your sleeve. So you could make, instead of the sleeve being three squares, you could add it a fourth square to make that sleeve a little bit longer. Okay, so for the cuff, I really wanna pull it in nice and tight so it's a nice snug cuff around my wrist. So what I'm gonna do is put a slip knot on my hook and I'm gonna use the four millimeter hook for this part. I'm going to join in at the seam and I'll be working a single crochet so chain one will work a single crochet in the seam then I'm gonna work a single crochet in the second double crochet then I'm going to work a single crochet in the chain one space and I'm going to go every other stitch like this around so a single crochet in the chain one a single crochet in the second double and I'm going to work that all the way around so I'm going to count as I go so one two three four five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so once you get all the way around, you should have 32 stitches and I'm going to chain out. Now I want the cuff a little bit longer than the 
the ribbing along the bottom. So I'm going to chain out 19. And then this is gonna be worked, join as you go exactly the same way. The only difference is this time we're going to have 18 stitches rather than 14. So I'm gonna work all the way down. Okay, and then we're skipping over the first stitch and slip stitching into the next two. Okay, so just continue working this just like I showed you the join as you go ribbed band. The only difference is we're going to need to slip stitch this to join once we get all the way around. Okay, so once you get your cuff finished, we're going to chain one and then we're going to slip stitch it together. Now I want the right sides facing, but instead of flipping the cardigan all the way inside out, I'm just gonna fold the cuff so that I get my right sides here together. Then I'm gonna slip stitch. You could also fasten off and do this with your yarn needle, but this way you don't have to fasten off. You can just keep going and slip stitch it. We want that slip stitch to the inside of the cuff and that's why we've put our right sides together. Okay, so you're just gonna go through each stitch on one side of the cuff to the other side of the cuff. So now once you've slip stitched all the way, we can just fasten this off. And this tail, you can weave it in, and this is what it's going to look like. Okay, so I finished the collar. I've added the buttons. I've woven in all of my tails, and what I did is gave it a light steam just to help kind of smooth out any of the edges and any of the curling. This is how it's going to look now buttoned up. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Make sure to check the description box below this video where you'll find all the links needed to make this cozy granny crop cardigan. Thanks so much guys. Have an awesome day.